So there was a question on the uh, community about uh, finding number of issues returned by a JQL. Now this question, let me let, let me uh, first uh, read the question, and uh, the reason I want to read this read the question is because uh, I want to show you I want to basically uh, uh, share this uh, use case. Now this question is uh, from Milan, and uh, Milan is asking that. Uh, he has configured, I guess he, he has configured this uh, rule where uh, he is uh, trying to send an email to someone and uh, the email is sent when the sprint is started and uh, then of course uh, there is a, there is a, there is an action, lookup issues where, the, the, where Using lookup issues, you can perform a JQL search, something like Sprint and Open Sprints and blah blah blah. And uh, when you run this, you will get, of course, the issues returned by this JQL. Now the problem is that when this rule is uh, triggered, an email is always sent, whether the whether the issues returned by the JQL. Uh, are one, two, three, or uh, zero. So basically, the requirement is the use case is that uh, don't send an email when there are no issues returned by a JQL. Now, for doing this, uh, you can actually uh, use one smart value called lookup issues dot size, which will give you a count because lookup issues is like a list or an array of all the issues. And uh, to demonstrate this, of course, I will uh, show you how it how it works. So this is my rule, uh, which is called as uh, count JQL issues. And if I show you the rule here, rule is actually very simple. The rule is triggered when the issue is transitioned to on hold for my one project. Um, and then I am performing this JQL search called status is equal to on hold. If I do a validate query, it will give me seven issues found. Now. I want this number to, I, I want to do something with this number. Now the good thing is that if you're using JQL search, if you're performing a JQL search using lookup issues, you can use this smart value called lookup issues dot, uh, basically lookup issues, which is uh, like a list. And if you do something like a dot size, you can get number of issues. And uh, you can, uh, to, validate, to validate this, you can uh, log a message and you can also add a comment to your issue which I quite like and uh, I will of course uh, save this and show you how this how this rule will work so I'll go to one of my issue I'll change the status to maybe in progress because we want to put it on hold and uh, if I click on on hold it will of course trigger the rule that is what I want to do that is triggering is not the important part the important part here is to understand how to count so you can see here that uh, the rule successfully it, it ran successfully and it says in the log seven issues found comment was also added to the issue and these are the issue like one two three four five six seven and uh, if i go to my if i go to one of my issue if i do a a refresh it will add a comment here issues found seven so this is something uh, really interest interesting because uh, I, I, I've been saying this quite a lot that if you're using uh, automation rules you can actually do quite a lot of things uh, although automation rules uh, these the, these automation rules they look uh, not very advanced and of course, uh, the, the idea here is not to compare automation with uh, scripting, for example, uh, but you can still do quite a lot of things with the help of uh, smart values. And uh, if you watched my video about, I, I think I talked about uh, things that you should really learn if you want to get the most out of your automation rule, smart value understanding how to make a web call, a web request using REST API or uh, understanding how to trigger these automation rules using webhook is something that you should really learn if you want to become really good in it. So that is all I wanted to talk about and share in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. 
and you learned something new today thank you very much